Good morning everyone and welcome to another RF Crypto video. Today's markets are still quite depressed but they have improved compared to yesterday. The global crypto market cap which was at about 970 billion uh, 24 hours ago is now standing at 995 billion close to the 1 trillion dollar psychological level and this is 4.5% higher than yesterday. Ethereum saw a massive 9% jump compared to yesterday. Bitcoin 3% not that much but the rest of the market is recovering quite nicely. We're seeing 7% for Solana, 6% for Polkadot, uh, Polygon by 7%, and some even by double digits, such as Avalanche by 13%. So the markets have reacted quite quickly in terms of correcting itself. We know for a fact that in the last two or three days, the price of the cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum, have gone down quite significantly by about 5 to 10% due to Jerome Powell's statements that they're going to continue increasing interest rates in order to combat inflation. And that had led to people selling their crypto holdings, which are risky assets, for safer assets, such as cash, bonds, and blue chip stocks. And that's why we saw bleeding from the crypto market in the last three to four days. Looking at the Bitcoin chart, we see that yesterday the prices dropped dramatically and it reached about 19,500 before we saw this cross section and a reversal of the trend where the prices started to rise once again. The prices steadily rose and went above the $20,000 resistance level and it's trading a little bit above that at around $20,500. And if the trend continues the way it is without any significant movement, then I believe that the prices of Bitcoin will reach about $22,000 in the next two or three days. But this market is very unpredictable nothing is ever linear like it is with this yellow line we see here a massive drop massive jump small jump small drop massive jump so nothing is ever linear in the market and one small shock can lead to the prices going either up or down one example is when jerome powell said that they're going to continue increasing interest rates the prices went down from twenty-two thousand all the way down to nineteen thousand five hundred. which is looking at the fear and greed index it's at 27. People are still fearful. As I stated before, the interest rates are still going to be increased. Jerome Powell has said so. So people are still not sure what to do. They're fearful that their investments are going to go down. Um, when interest rates increase, as I said before, people tend to shy away from riskier assets. And when people shy away from riskier assets, this means that there's fear in the market. Because once people start selling their holdings in the crypto market, then the prices drop due to demand and supply. And this breeds fear in the market because the people see the prices dropping and others seeing this will also sell, causing a runaway effect where we see the prices going further down. And yesterday it was extreme fear. Today is improved a little bit, but people are still holding on to what they have and they're seeing what the next move in the market is. So the Argentinian province of Mendoza allows millions of people to pay for taxes using stable coins since Saturday. The Mendoza Tax Administration, ATM, is giving its roughly 2 million residents more online payment options for their taxes in an effort to move towards modernization and innovation. And this is the first time outside a country where a cryptocurrency is a legal tender, where we see them allow the payment of taxes using cryptocurrencies. In this case, it's just stablecoin, which is pegged against a currency. And in most cases, it's the dollar. So in an 11 page document outlining the new crypto payment process for taxes, Tether's USDT and MakerDAO's DAI stablecoins are shown as two cryptocurrency payment options. So at the moment, only two of these stablecoins are allowed to be used for payments of taxes. But I think in the future, they're gonna increase this number once those other stablecoins show actual stability. Taxpayers can use their Binance, Ripio, Bunbit, Bitso, Lemon, or Bybit crypto wallets, among others, to pay for their taxes. The ATM site will generate a QR code for users to scan with their crypto wallets after filing out preliminary information. Upon receiving the stablecoins, ATM will convert the US tethered stablecoins, which is USDT and DAI, into pesos for processing. This is quite an exciting uh, thing that's going on and it paves the way for the payment of taxes and just the payment of government services using cryptocurrency. And this surely will trickle into the larger economy where we will see the payment of retail and even the supply chain and wholesale being everything 
done through cryptocurrencies and the payments being done through crypto. And it is a step in the right direction. And I think this will lead to even further adoption in a country which already has a massive adoption of crypto being Argentina. So Argentina, a nation with a history of state bankruptcies and severe inflation is no stranger to crypto. So a lot of people use cryptocurrencies in Argentina, millions of people actually, because the inflation rate is extremely high. It's 64%. Also, the currency Argentinian peso is always devaluing against the dollar. So in order to protect themselves against high inflation and the devaluing dollar, part of the population converts their pesos into cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin or Ethereum or into stable coins such as USDT, which is pegged to the dollar. And this protects their capital because the Argentinian peso might be devaluing and people might be losing money without actually doing anything due to this inflation and depreciation. But those that are holding stable coin don't face the devaluation and the capital that they have maintains their value. And I mean, inflation in America is quite high. It's 8.5%. And if people hold stable coins, it will sort of erode away at 8.5% due to the inflation, but it's still better than 64% in Argentina. Because of capital flights and a lot of dollars leaving the economy, the Argentinian central bank has said that anyone buying cryptocurrency would be barred from accessing the country's currency exchange market, supposedly in an effort to curb these USD conversions, which are further fueling the devaluation of the currency. And this came because a lot of people were converting their pesos for US dollars and the federal government had to act or else their economy would collapse once and for all. The Argentinian government is restricting certain types of crypto operations. However, on a provincial level, like in Mendoza, uh, they're looking more at crypto adoption. They think to themselves, you know, our citizens already have a lot of crypto in their wallets let us just allow them to pay for taxes using that crypto, which is commendable. OpenSea turns into NFT ghost town after volume plunges by 99% in three months. OpenSea, the world's largest NFT marketplace, witnessed a substantial drop in daily volumes as fears about a potential market bubble grow. Notably, the marketplace processed nearly $5 million worth of NFT transactions on August 28th, which sounds like a lot, but it's nothing. It's 99% lower than May 1st's record high of almost $406 million. The massive declines in daily volumes of NFT transactions coincided with equally drastic drops in OpenSea users and their transactions as well, suggesting that the value and interest in the blockchain-based collectibles or NFTs have diminished in the recent months. This is further visible in the falling floor prices, which is the minimum amount one is ready to pay for an NFT. So. You have a minimum amount and then people bid on top of that and that has also fallen. For instance, the floor price of Board Ape Yacht Club, which is the most famous and most well-known NFT collection, dropped by 53% to 72.5 Ether on August 28th versus 153.7 Ether on May 1st. So it looks like this NFT bubble is bursting. NFT prices are coated in the native currency of the blockchain on which they're launched and most of the cases in, it's in Ethereum, meaning that if Ethereum's market valuation falls, then NFT prices will also fall. And a bearish Ethereum market appears to be one of the primary drivers behind the poor NFT statistics, because when Ethereum was doing pretty well, the NFT marketplace was doing extremely well, but now it's below 1,500 and the NFT volume or daily transaction volume has gone down by 99%. So these are all bubbles that are bursting. This is because everything's unregulated and people go haywire because there was a lot of free money, especially after the pandemic and due to the stimulus. So they were just pumping money into crypto, they were pumping money into DeFi and they are pumping money into NFTs. And now interest rates are increasing, money is less accessible and that means that people need to think twice before investing their money, indicating that they'll remove their money from NFTs and invest in something that sounds more sensible in the traditional sense uh, such as stocks bonds and maybe even leave their money in cash to earn the high interest that is now prevalent in most of the developed economies and that's it for today's video thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video please leave a like hit the subscribe button and share this video with your family and friends invest wisely and cheers